Afternoon, folks. I hope you are well. I'm about to make a start on a commissioned horn. Um, a few little packages come through the door. Um, I'm not sure if they're all pipe related. One of them definitely is. One of them is the Pipe Club of London Pipe of the Year for 2022. This should be my new dust scoop. I made a good time. When did I order this? I think just yesterday, actually. Hold on, this was supposed to have a grill at the bottom. That's the reason why I ordered it. That's not nice. I have to get in touch. Anyway, this compared to my other scoop, which is like that high, I figured this would be much more um, concentrated. The airflow. So we'll see how that works out. That's number one. What else? Uh, oh no, that's nothing to do with photo thing. That's some photos. And that's nothing with it. So let's get to the, the main topic. Oh, the packaging on this is almost as bad as mine. When I say bad, I mean Fort Noxy. Don't mean bad, bad. I guess I should have done this beforehand. Sorry about that. All right. Well, as you can see, it's a Vaughan pipe. Um, so 2022 pipe of the year for the Pipe Club of London. Nice. Uh, actually, if you've seen Big Smoke, he's already shown his. So. With the Pipe Club of London Pipes of the Year, generally speaking, what you can nearly always be sure of is a nice pipe, interesting shape, something different usually, um, always a silver band, nearly always. Well, you'll see it at the same time as me. This should be a sandblasted pot type, sacky pot type thing. Oh yeah. Get a filter. Nice ring grain. That's a serious bend on there. I'm going to have to look into that. Drilling's good. And at the bottom there, you have a beautiful engraving Pipe Club of London emblem. I imagine it's laser etched. The ring says Pipe Club of London 2022. It's really nicely engraved, I have to say. And it's 925 silver. You got the white dot as you get with the vowel. Comes with an adapter if you want to use it filterless. These are actually nice adapters. I should ask them about these. Very nice, very tight, good fit. It's got a little rubber gasket on there to make it airtight. Very good. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is a very, very extreme uh, uh, bend and the drilling is very, very high in the mortise, which with a nine mil is absolutely fine. It's perfectly acceptable because you're not putting a pipe cleaner through it anyway, because the filter won't allow it. Um, but, uh, with a pipe with a, uh, an extreme bend like that, you're always going to struggle to get that drill where you want it. But um, I'm looking forward to smoking this. They've got the new filters in, the double ceramic head, um, sides. It feels lightweight. You can almost pass it off as a dono with that white spot. <laughs> Shh. 
Nice. Draws a little tight with the filter in. It's kind of standard, really, unless you're buying an LCS pack, in which case it'll be far more open. But it is pretty standard. It's good. It's fine. And if I wanted a mess, I suppose I could drill it a little open up with the draft hole. Really nice grain. Nice shape. I do like that shape. It's really interesting. And it's going to hang really well. Um, I, don't, I suppose you could call it a poker, really. You could... No, it doesn't sit. It's, the bottom is rounded, so it doesn't sit. Got a little inward bevel there on the inside of the rim. Um, holds really nicely because you've got this little space there for your thumb. Very nice. A nice silver band. I really like that silver band. I like the engraving on it. It's a good quality engraving. You probably won't be able to catch it there, but it's good. Very, very happy with that. So, John, Bernard, main guys at the uh, Pipe Club of London, thank you very much for organising this. Every single year they sort out a new pipe, that's all. That takes a lot of effort and organisation and uh, logistics. So, thank you very much. They always get them at a decent price as well. So, fantastic. I found a sock. Well, I guess I'll put it back in for now. Till I decide to smoke it. Thanks, guys. Much appreciated. Great service as always. And I will. I really like it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's something a little bit different. Very, very nice job. Thanks, guys. I'm going to let you. Um, I'm going to follow this on with a little bit of a drive that I did earlier on, talking about uh, dust extraction. So that follows this. For now, I'll say thank you. Catch you on the next one. Good afternoon all. I hope you are well. Well, it's a normal spring sunny day here in the UK. It hasn't stopped fishing all day long. My garage is underwater virtually, not quite, but a lot of water coming into the workshop at the moment. I have started a, another pipe, a commissioned uh, horn. Currently smoking, currently smoking my bent uh, billiard, one of my own. You've seen this one often enough, I'm sure. So you probably know what's in it. It's Orlick uh, Golden Sliced. I haven't smoked that for two or three weeks now. <clears throat> it's good stuff. So if you follow my channel, whether it be on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, you'll know that I've been talking about dust extraction for some time. And um, I've got a, at the moment an Axminster, uh, it's a trade level, it's a professional level extractor, which does its job, but it's not ideal for what I'm doing. I want something a lot more powerful. Um, I mean, I managed with it fine for a couple of years um, and I think it's more about the housing that you make for it um, than the, the ultimate power of the device um, because they're not really designed to, to be sitting next to a sanding wheel open with a big open scoop which is what I use um, it really needs to have if you look at most of the pipe makers out there They'll have constructed um, their own sort of custom-made scoop around the sanding wheel and then you have no issues, um, which is really something which I need to do. So truth of the matter is, this extractor would probably be fine if I did that. But nevertheless, well, perhaps somebody else might be able to do that because I'm probably going to sell that soon. <coughs> um, either that or I'll dedicate it to, to one of the other machines, possibly. Um, Nevertheless, I've, I've uh, purchased an upgraded system. I've, number one, I've bought a, an air filter. So this is a device, a square device, 
which hangs on your ceiling. It's remote controlled because it's on the ceiling. Um, it's a two-stage uh, filtration and that is designed to filter out airborne dust. So especially when you're dealing with briar, which is a very dense hardwood essentially, essentially um, the dust is very, very fine, especially when you're sanding different grits, higher grits, you know, you're ending up with really, really fine particles um, and you just need to be able to, to filter that out. So there's dust airborne all the time. Uh, although I wear a mask most of the time now, it's still important uh, for one's health to try and filter out as much of that as possible. Um, so that's that. I ordered that one a couple of days ago that hopefully will arrive in the next few days. And last night I ordered a new um, really strong uh, record power cam vac, which is a, a canister, it's like an oil drum. Um, and you can buy it with one motor, two motors, or three motors. And I went for the top one, I went for three motors. <coughs> so it's, you, you ultimately get three, um, uh, three HP, three horsepower. Each motor is one HP. Um, and that's very powerful. Uh, and I've uh, also done a lot of searching around to try and find a scoop which is gonna be more sensible, uh, which I've ordered as well. If that also doesn't work as well as I'd like it to, then I'll probably end up um, factoring, a um, putting together a scoop, a custom-made scoop, or maybe I'll ask somebody to make it for me in metal, possibly. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but um, you know, I've, I noticed a few weeks ago that I've I had a cough and cold maybe a month ago, and it was just lingering. You know, it just wasn't going away, and. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't COVID, it wasn't anything like that. I kept on testing and I was coming back negative the whole time. Uh, so, and I figured basically that it's, it's it, you know, really not helping myself with not having decent uh, dust extraction. So that's why I've gone to town a little bit on this, the dust extraction. And one of the reasons why I went for the top sort of powerful one is so that in the future, um, once I've got my workshop organized as exactly how I want it, I will then probably install a ducted system with hard uh, piping, hard ducting, rather than the hoses. Um, so in order for that to not lose too much power, too much suction um, through the ducting, um, I went for the most powerful one. It's, it's kind of a, uh, a mantra which I've had throughout my profession. Um, you know, even as a photographer, I did the same thing. I always bought the best equipment that I could afford. Um, so I rather held out a bit longer till I could afford something a little bit better that's going to kind of last now, I'm not, i won't have to worry about upgrading it again in the future so this particular device is expensive um but you know <clears throat> i w did a lot of research on it i watched a lot of videos about filtration not necessarily about this particular filter but uh, extractor but about the importance of it um and you know people make the mistake of when they're setting up a workshop for whatever it doesn't have to be pipe making but any kind of wood workshop <coughs> or metal workshop you know they're investing in, in expensive machinery professional machinery a whole array of different machines but really and truly the dust extraction should be at the top of the list um, dust extraction is extremely important um, and uh, as one of the guys that I was watching I don't remember I don't remember which channel it was but he said that you know um, the damage that dust can do to you doesn't happen overnight it's kind of a uh, an incremental kind of thing and uh, the big chips and things like that aren't really the problem it's the fine dust which gets into your lungs and there can be an incremental amount of damage which is possibly not reversible so um, I, I really this is kind of a light bulb moment although dust extraction has always been important for me but I've never really made it a priority and which I am doing now so I've got a, an array of masks and I'm, I'm constantly looking out for something a little bit more comfortable the whole time. Um, not because it's going to be better, but because I'll use it more if it's comfortable. The less intrusive it is, obviously it's got to be efficient, but the less intrusive it is, the more I'm going to wear it. So <clears throat> and that's something I'm looking for as well. Um, but I do have a good array of masks, yeah, and I'm okay with that. And, you know, it's like everything, you're always on the hunt for something better. It's like uh, the next pipe or the next tobacco, you always think it's going to be the best one. Um, so, but I have come to that decision that dust extraction is really, really of paramount 
important. So any of you guys out there who are starting out or if you're established pipe makers, um, you know, the established ones I'm sure would have already come to that conclusion. Um, and it's a conclusion that I've already come to, but I've never, as I say, made it uh, a, a priority to spend decent money on making sure that I'm properly covered in that respect. So hopefully when those machines arrive, um, I think my workshop will be in far better shape. Um, you know, hopefully I won't be having that film of dust over everything, which I've got at the moment. So, you know, even if you're not working, that film of dust gets airborne all the time. Just walking past dust, micro particles are going to lift off from the air movement. You won't see it, but you'll be breathing it in. Um, the body can deal with a certain amount, but, you know, if you're in there day in, day out, breathing in those fine particles is not good. So I'm hopeful that the air filter, the, the, the ceiling mounted filter, will deal with all of that efficiently. Um, so that's um, <clears throat> my chat, my little drive for today. I haven't really been doing much drive and many drive videos for a long time now. My uh, daily schedule has changed, so I don't have that morning drive. Um, but um, I mean, there are lots of topics which I could talk about, um, you know, like uh, Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine, that kind of thing. But I'm not gonna get into that now. I'm gonna rather get into the workshop. So for now, I'll say goodbye. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you on the next one.